Sounding the alarm on wasteful government spending. He's Simon Conway on News Radio 1040 WHO. 72 degrees out at the Des Moines International Airport, 438 on a Monday afternoon. Very pleased to welcome back to the Simon Conway Show, Mark Meckler. He is the founder of Citizens for Self-Governance, and uh, he is a guy that really wants us to get the Convention of the States up and running. How are you, Mark? I'm great. Good to be back with you, Simon. Good to have you uh, back, sir. So uh, tomorrow is the last day we pay our state legislators per diem which means it's not going to be long after that when they'd get done. Uh, what are the chances of us getting the Convention of the States language done? Look, I think the chances are really good. We're done in the House. We came out of the committee in the Senate 12 to 3, overwhelming margin. We absolutely have the votes on the Senate floor. The only question is when they're going to bring it up for a vote. We, we have the overwhelming support of the Senate president, uh, Senator Whitver. We're really gra- grateful for that. But we need these guys to actually just call the vote. That's what we're waiting for right now. All right. So who has to do that? Bill Dix? It's really, we we need the Senate president and the majority leader, Dix, uh, on board. And and Dix is supportive as well. He's been really good. It's just time to make the call. We're worried, like you are, that we're just going to run out of time. We've we've seen that happen before in other legislators. Your folks who are listening need to call their senators and let them know to call the vote on SJR 8 right now. We're ready to go. If you guys get this done, you'll be the 11th state to make the call. Mm. Um, There are a bunch of things that uh, we think might be dying in similar ways, and it's almost an excuse. Ah, we run out of time. But really, the the big dirty secret is they don't want to do it. Well, you know, I think in this case, I'm pretty sure the majority of folks in the Senate do want to do it. I think there are a couple of holdouts that are, you know, just have a few fears so we just need them to come on board. We are very close. I actually believe it's going to get done. I mean, we're really excited to have the overwhelming support of the Senate president. We need the majority leader just to make the call. That could be done as early as tomorrow morning. We could be having this conversation tomorrow afternoon and be celebrating a victory there in Iowa. Yeah, because you would think that uh, this should have been done by now. You know, we see this over and over again. It's not just Iowa. We see it in legislatures all around the country. And, you know, there are times where people just say, look, you know, we're tired. We want to go home. They don't have any necessarily sense of urgency. They might look at it and think, you got to get to 34 states. We're only going to be number 11. What's the big deal? The big deal is every state matters. There are a lot of folks coming along right behind you. Missouri is right behind. Texas is right behind. West Virginia is right behind. North Carolina is right behind. So we're on a run here. We just did Arizona and Nebraska. We need Iowa to get in line and get it done before the session's over. So Nebraska is done now, is it? Nebraska is done. It was an overwhelming, favorable vote. It really just kind of blew through Nebraska this session. Uh, Again, they did it. (laughs) They did it in plenty of time. We're hoping that Iowa will do it. The House acted early, got it done. Great leadership over in the House. Uh, Yeah, we've got to give a little hat tip to uh, uh, to, uh, Hagenau. Uh, We do, absolutely. Again, great. That's what it takes to get these things done. It takes great leadership. And I think we've seen it most of the session here. I know Iowa's done some great other stuff. So we can finish with a bang here. We get the Senate president and the majority leader to push this thing forward, get the vote tomorrow morning, get it done. The way we're going to get that, though, Simon, is your listeners have to call their senators and have to tell them they want to vote. They want it tomorrow morning on SJR 8. We can get it done. I'll call you back and celebrate if we do. <laughs> uh, now, we also have to talk about uh, where this is on the radar of the people of Iowa, and it, and it isn't. That's the reality. We like to talk in the real world here. Uh, there are other things they would rather see get done, uh, medical marijuana being uh, one of them. Uh, they really want to see uh, that get done. They want to see uh, the uh, traffic cams banned in the state of Iowa. Uh, that they, want, they want that to uh, get done. They want good, strong strong, eminent domain uh, language, which, uh, again, sailed through the House, stalling out in the Senate. Uh, and, th- and then there's the other side of it, uh, that you've got uh, conservative people who are concerned. We've had this this particular part of the conversation before, Mark Meckler. Uh, oh, yeah, well, this is how they'll get rid of our Second Amendment. I know it's garbage. You know it's garbage. Uh, but that is out there, and it's being pushed by some strong Second Amendment people. So let me definitively prove to you that that's garbage. And I mean definitively, and anybody who disagrees with you or me after this is in line with the radical leftists in this this country. Go for it. Here's the definitive proof. On Friday of last week, Common Cause, 
and a coalition of 230 radical progressive groups from around the country issued a declaration of war on the Convention of States. These are literally the NAACP, the SEIU, AFSCME Union, all the biggest unions in the country, all the biggest leftist groups, Greenpeace is in there, MoveOn.org is in there, Daily Cause is in there. 230 radical leftist groups are against this because they know we can restrain the federal government. If they believe they could run away with the Constitution, why would they all come out against this? So if you believe that you are standing against the left, when you stand against this, you better think again. You better go look up what I just told you. Common Cause, 230 groups signed a letter against this. And if you stand against this, you stand with them. It's a time for choosing, Simon. Uh, I believe it is as well. Uh, the things that we want to see uh, done at a convention of the state so it would be a balanced budget and term limits. Balanced budget, term limits. And here's my, my most important is a limitation on the power of the federal government to do stuff. For example, the federal government, in my opinion, has no constitutional right to be involved in education. Mm -hmm. We need to say that explicitly. Thomas Jefferson knew it. He said it. And today they're involved in education. There's never been an amendment allowing them to do it. We need to get them out of education. We need to get them out of energy. We need to get them out of commerce. These are things they were never intended to be involved in. And if we want our freedoms back... The founders gave us a method for taking it back. Here, here's what the founders really intended, Simon. They intended that we govern ourselves. They did not intend that we be governed by some unaccountable bureaucracy far away. They gave us Article 5 as a methodology for reimposing self-governance. It's time to use it. Crazy, isn't it, that we should govern ourselves, huh? <laughs> yeah, what a radical idea. We're talking to uh, Mark Meckler. We're talking about the Convention of States. It is uh, passed through the Iowa House. It sailed through the Iowa House. Uh, it is uh, stalling out. That is the reality. It is stalling out in the Iowa Senate, and there is very, very little time left to get this done. 284-1040. 284-1040. If you want to uh, have a conversation with Mark Meckler, uh, maybe express some concerns, or if you want to find out how how you can help, uh, then you can call us as well. 284-1040, 284-1040. Don't go uh, anywhere. Mark, we'll be right back to you. We are in the middle of a conversation with Mark Meckler. He is the founder of Citizens for Self-Governance and uh, the lead pusher nationwide of the Convention of the States. I said uh, we would have people that wanted to talk to you, uh, Mark Meckler, and I was not kidding. Let's go and talk to uh, Jim right now. Hi, Jim. Hey, Simon, thanks for taking my call. You're welcome, buddy. Uh, a little bit ago, your guest said that uh, this convention would uh, ensure our Second Amendment rights, and he was going to explain how. But all I heard was a whole list of people who were against it. Now, from you know, from his remarks, so how is it going to protect our Second Amendment rights? Well, sure, Jim. Uh, let me jump in on that. It's not that the convention is designed to protect our Second Amendment rights. Our Second Amendment rights are adequately protected by the Second Amendment itself and by organizations that litigate on its behalf, like the NRA, protecting that Second Amendment, and others all across the country who litigate on its behalf. What I was trying to answer to you is there, there are those out there, and Simon mentioned them, that are worried that our Second, Amendments, uh, our Second Amendment rights would be at risk under a convention like this. They absolutely would not be at risk. Sitting on my legal advisory board is a uh, longtime Second Amendment attorney, Chuck Cooper. He litigates constitutional issues for the NRA. He was Ronald Reagan's personal constitutional attorney. There's a guy that has fought for the Second Amendment his entire career, and he assures us, and anybody else who wants to ask, you can find this on our website, that the Second Amendment is not at all at risk in any way, shape, or form by this sort of convention. Okay, thank you for uh, helping me, um, you know, for making that clear. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, Jim. Appreciate it. Uh, the, uh, of course, uh, Mark, the... Um uh, the reasoning you get from uh, some of these uh, people who are uh, say, oh, they're going to take your Second Amendment rights away. The reason is because the very first convention, which was pre-Constitution, by the way, we should point that out, shouldn't we, uh, did become a bit of a runaway convention. That is not possible anymore. Well, let me, Simon, it's important that I correct some history here. Yep. A, a lot of people believe what you just said, but it's not correct history. Let okay. me explain why they believe I, it and why it's not correct. I, I love it when people point out when I'm wrong, and I'm never afraid to say I'm wrong. Okay, and the reason that you believe this, and so many of us did, is because until literally about 10 years ago, there was no information to the contrary. And the reason for that is because nobody had ever gone to the National Archives and pulled what the actual commissions were 
from the folks that attended that convention. Okay. In Federalist 40, Madison says, if you want to know what the authority of the commissioners was, you should look to the states that granted those commissions. So Professor Rob Nadelson actually went to the National Archives, pulled those commissions, and seven of the commissioners, the first seven states to call the convention, had this language in their commissions that said the commissioners have any and all authority necessary to render the federal constitution adequate for the exigencies of the union. An important distinction there, the word constitution at the time didn't mean a document, because as you pointed out, there was no constitution. It meant form of government. So they were given all authority necessary without limitation to fix the government. Later, after seven states had called for the convention, Congress weighed in, as Congress always does behind the times that, oh, these guys are all doing this thing, we ought to get on board, and they issued what they called a recommendation. They had no authority under the Articles of Confederation to call a convention, no authority to tell the states to do anything to amend. They said, hey, since you're all getting together, we agree with that, you ought to do this uh, to, to amend the Articles of Confederation. So people thought... Uh, wrongly, historically, that the Congress had actually called the convention. It did not. And they thought that Congress had put some sort of limitation on these delegates. And I want to finish with this on this subject. It is outrageous to imagine that our founding fathers, men who placed such a high price on honor, that they would have these limitations on them and then go to Philadelphia to this convention and then just do whatever they wanted. It's It's outrageous. And the reality is, they followed exactly what they were told to do. There was never a runaway convention in 1787. Mm. And and of course, uh, the other thing is that the language in the it, which uh, is being hopefully passed in Iowa is uh, very very specific. Why don't you tell us what's in that? It is very specific. So what it does is it proposes three subject matter areas that can be discussed at convention, and only three. It's limited to this: anything that would impose fiscal restraints on the federal government. You mentioned a BBA. One of my favorites is imposing generally accepted accounting principles so we get real numbers out of the federal government. Yes. You can impose tax caps uh, and revenue caps based on inflation and population growth. These are real limitations. The second is anything that would impose power or jurisdiction limits on the federal government. So anything that would say the federal government may not do this any longer. You cannot expand federal government power. You can only limit it. And the third is anything that would impose term limits on the federal government. That would include Congress, the federal courts. I think very strongly that the Supreme Court needs to be term limited. And importantly, the bureaucracies. These are federal officials that need to be term limited. They shouldn't be there for 30 or 40 years. Uh, I would agree with uh, all of that. If you would like to uh, have this conversation, well, you can. Uh, You could uh, check out the website. Why don't you give that? That is conventionofstates.com. You can see everything I'm talking about and more. The debate is there. If you want to see the sides of this issue, we openly debate the issue on the website. If you want to understand the history, look, you know, if you follow soccer or football or baseball, you know the rules of the game. The rules of the game of politics in the United States of America are set at a baseline by the Constitution. You should know it. You should know how to play by the rules. Article 5 was given to us as the ultimate rule to allow us to reassert self-governance as the people. We need to participate in that game. I mean, that is the point, right? This is this is in the Constitution. It's there for a reason. Um, and so that's why, uh, why we should support Article 5, because the bottom line is we essentially have a monarchy. Now, there's a whole bunch of people running a monarchy these days, uh, but it's still a monarchy. And the one thing you absolutely positively know that our founders did not ever want was an elite running our lives. Uh, you know, Simon, you nailed it, and this is really important. The founders put it in there two days before the end of convention in 1787. Mm-hmm. Colonel George Mason from Virginia stands up, and he notices that it's not in there, the right of the states to yep. propose amendments. And he says, are we so stupid that we believe that a federal government that becomes a tyranny will propose amendments to restrain its own tyranny? Now, I wish we had video, because I'm sure they laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I'm out of time. I've got to let you go. That's All a fantastic right. way to end. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of the day, brother. Thank you. We will see what happens. Sign the petition at cosaction.com and get as many of your friends and family to do the same. With your full address, your state legislators will know that you really are their constituents in their district. Our success depends on you. So we're inviting you to be part of history. Let's invoke the constitutional solution that's as big as the problem.